Fernando Santos is gone. Well, he's been gone for about a month or so now. And Roberto Martinez is in for Portugal. The man who managed Belgium from 2016 onward, that's following Euro 2016, will be taking over for Santos. And I don't know how I feel about it just yet. Just like I don't know how I feel about his dance moves while at a Jason Derulo concert. <laughs> Yes, that is indeed Martinez, and hey, what's up? I'm Adrian, and welcome to Rabona TV. Happy New Year, if this is your first time seeing me since the World Cup, and a welcome back to everyone else. Great to see you guys again. So yes, with a new coach for Portugal, I thought I'd give my opinion, since a lot of you were asking for it on Twitter and in the latest Weekend Recap video, so let's get right into it, man. Let me start by saying this. Was I a big fan of Martinez taking over? Not at all. I find his managerial CV to be a bit on the underwhelming side, but now that he has been confirmed as the manager for Portugal, I will certainly support him and give him a chance to impose himself on the squad, just as I do for any manager. Santos had that support prior until his tactics and some big game fumbles in qualifying in major tournaments made it very, very difficult to support him as Portugal's manager, so Martinez will get the same treatment. Those were the big issues with Fernando Santos, by the way. Tactics that didn't really align with the talent pool that Portugal had, the favoring of certain players no matter what kind of form they're in, and seemingly playing for a draw in matches where that was all that Portugal needed in order to advance in qualifying, and ending up losing those games. It's a dangerous game to play, my friend, and with the talent Portugal has, you don't need to play that way. We caught a glimpse of what Portugal's group of players are capable of when they absolutely trashed Switzerland at the most recent World Cup. Youth in the attack where every player is dynamic and moving about the pitch, not static and just cross, cross, cross into the box. As for Belgium and their time under Martinez, there's also a feeling from many Belgium supporters that their overall play became less and less inspiring during Martinez's tenure. Being fair to him, this is a Belgian golden generation that was really aging out, and Martinez would probably argue that if he had them during the 2014 World Cup or Euro 2016, where they were eliminated by Wales, maybe he could have done more damage. But ultimately, the highlight of his resume with Belgium is a third place finish at the 2018 World Cup with that golden generation. If you were around during my World Cup coverage, you'll know that I have a somewhat disagreeable opinion of the third place game. <laughs> I'm not that into it. I see it as a glorified friendly for most countries, but I can absolutely recognize that for some countries that aren't traditional powers maybe, there is a value in it and great memories to be made if you win that playoff. For a team like Belgium, it seemed like more of a consolation prize that they probably didn't care much for. I mean, looking at England starting 11 from that match, it wasn't the most competitive game. Danny Rose, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Phil Jones getting starts. So Belgium's third place achievement, again, nothing to sneeze at, but context is, as usual, very important. In Euro 2020, Belgium made a run to the quarterfinals where they were eventually beaten by Italy after previously somehow shithousing a win against Portugal. <laughs> they were dominated by Portugal. They had an XG of just 0.24, six attempts to Portugal's 23, but I mean, it was mostly on Portugal for not being able to finish their breakfast, so to speak. And then at this most recent World Cup, with Belgium aging and seemingly having plenty of feuds within the dressing room, they flopped to a group stage exit. I'm sorry, but I have to say it one last time, Romelu Lukaku and his 1.98 expected goals from that second half against Croatia can be looked to as a big reason why they didn't advance at the expense of Croatia. They, well, he could have ended Croatia right there. 1.98 XG in 45 minutes of football for a single player is wild. I mean, yes, Belgium were pretty horrid in the group stage. The loss to Morocco and even that win against Canada was incredibly underwhelming also. But from a manager's point of view, with Lukaku throwing the game like that, there's not much else you can do from the sidelines. And again, that's not to excuse their overall play at the World Cup. Under Santos, Portugal have typically played with a 4-3-3, though later in his time at different points throughout the match, that would shift to a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-3-1. Martinez most commonly fielded a 3-4-2-1 with Belgium with De Bruyne behind Lukaku, wing backs flying up and down the pitch, and a relatively slow back three. I wouldn't want to see this with Portugal personally, and thankfully Martinez has started by saying he isn't married to any shape or tactics, as he said at his unveiling, quote, I don't believe in systems. I believe in players, in human beings, and in talent. You need to be tactically flexible to get the most out of every player, rather than the players adapting to the system. 
Portugal must always aim to win, and to do that, you need to be a modern team with tactical flexibility. Playing with a three-man or four-man defense depends on the players available. And the job for me and my coaching staff will be to get the maximum out of every player. That sounds nice. I mean, it sounds nice to me. I love a coach who is able to identify the strengths and weaknesses of not only his opponents and how they can exploit them, but his own team and will make changes accordingly. I mean, as they say in, you know, a song of ice and fire books all the time, words are wind. We'll have to see how he goes forward here, but at least he was saying the right things at his press conference. On that note, because it is absolutely pertinent to Portugal's tactics, the question of Ronaldo and his place in the team was asked of Martinez, to which he said, quote, Football decisions have to be made based on what happens on the pitch, not in an office. I will contact all the 26 players who are in Portugal's World Cup squad as my starting point, and Ronaldo is on that list. He has played for the Seleção for 19 years and deserves the respect to sit down and talk. Again, it's his first press conference. I would be surprised if he leaned hard in either direction with Ronaldo, given it's such a contentious issue for some. There are some that need to see him play, even if he's in poor form as he has been this season, while others think that team selections should be a meritocracy and put what's best for the team before the individual. Prior to Martinez being appointed, it was mooted that Portugal would look to bring on Mourinho, should Roma allow him to manage both his club and country at the same time. That was a popular rumor going around, but according to the Portuguese FA head Fernando Gomes, the only person who was given a concrete offer was Roberto Martinez. So. Martinez's managerial career. He was at Swansea for 126 matches, then went to Wigan, and while they were relegated by him, he won the FA Cup with them, before moving on to Everton. And while he had some good moments with them in his first season, where they finished fifth, one better than Moyes in the previous season, they dropped dramatically following that. 11th in the following season, and 11th in the one after that. In fact, he was sacked before the last match of the season, and had Unsworth not taken over and got a 3-0 win on the final match day against Norwich, they could have finished in 13th, so not a good season at all. There are those who say that Roberto Martinez has failed upwards in some respects because he hasn't won much. Going from that Everton sacking to perhaps the most sought after position in international football at the time, taking over Belgium's golden generation, the number one ranked team for years, is certainly a bit of a perplexing move. But International football and managers often work outside of club football hiring rules, if you will. The best managers in the world are in club football, so countries sometimes scramble to find a suitable coach, sort of the best of the rest, if you will. There has to be a reason why Roberto Martinez keeps on getting these very, very highly rated jobs. Portugal's crop of young talent makes them one of the most sought after jobs in international football. A manager who can get a coherent attacking style of play with this team while sorting out some deficiencies in the center back positions could turn them into the one of the most difficult teams to play against in international football. Capable of snuffing out your attack while simultaneously doing a Portugal versus Switzerland from World Cup 2022 against you. However, Martinez and his most recent approach for Belgium did not impress me in the slightest. Incredibly pragmatic and happy to sit back and defend and try to hurt you on the counter. This is what Santos did for a lot of the time he was the Portugal manager. Not the entirety of the time, but a lot of it. And this did not at all bring out the best of Portugal. Sure, it worked when Portugal perhaps didn't have the talent to dictate play versus top opposition, but Portugal doesn't need to play like that with their current crop of talent. And I am worried that this will be more of the same under Roberto Martinez if he adopts some of his tactics from his time with Belgium. Of course, he said in the press conference that he will be flexible, but we'll see, right? Words are wind, as George R. R. Martin would write. <laughs> Ultimately, this appointment doesn't really excite me, but like I said, I'll get behind him and give him time to make it work for Portugal. What is kind of promising, or at least interesting to me, is that he is just the third foreign manager that Portugal have hired. And the last two did pretty well. Otto Gloria back in 1966, getting Portugal to third in 1966. Of course, Scolari took Portugal to the Euro 2004 final, as well as fourth place in the 2006 World Cup. Two solid Brazilian appointments. I was of the opinion that a foreign manager would be the way forward for Portugal. I've been calling for Benfica to move away from the same recycled Portuguese names that always come up, and they did so with Roger Schmidt. You've seen how that has gone. One loss. A much better and more modern style of play. I don't know that Martinez will be a big enough departure from Portugal's former tactics, and he's not the profile I had in mind, but... 
I'm not going to rule out that sometimes things can be a perfect fit for each other when you least expect it. An inexplicable fit that goes beyond expectations in that it bucks the trends of the past for both manager and team. It becomes an outlier in comparison to their previous work, and hopefully that can happen with Portugal. As I've said a few times, I'm not so optimistic that this will take Portugal to that next step where they become a team that every nation well and truly fears. One that can, you know, end Cinderella stories like that of Morocco. <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see, right? Anyways, more to come on this as I will continue to monitor Portugal and their performances very closely for you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Ciao.